So, um, the other day, why are you looking at me, Chara? Oh. The other day. I got a funny feeling. This is not actually from Netflix India. It's from Netflix, which is all like under the big, you know, One big banner. happy international family. Um, I have no idea if we're gonna get to show the full episode because it's from Explained and it could get copyright claimed or blocked by Netflix if we uh, put up the whole thing. But I think at the very least, we should be able to get away with doing a cut down version of yeah. this. Thank you, Netflix, for allowing us to react to this. Whatever uh, you're allowing us to show, thank you. And uh, look, very much looking forward to having a better, more well-rounded understanding within 16 minutes of Cricket. If you haven't seen Explained before, it's a good show. Yeah, it's, uh, you love that show. I, I do, I like it a lot. I like a, what it dives into quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I mean, in general, Explained is left-leaning, and I try to always stay center, because it's made by Vox but I still appreciate the information nonetheless. Cricket is an old British sport. Anyway, please, uh... okay. Cricket, of course, oh. doesn't even have rules. It has laws, and that immediately strikes some people as pompous and self-regarding. Yeah. Those laws were mostly written in 19th century London. It's but English, it's what do you expect? still considered the home of cricket. Called lords. Lords, yes. Yeah. Lords, deeply rooted in tradition and in the ritual tradition brings. Bless cricket, it has a tea break in the game. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a test of attrition. A lot of people can't get their mind around how do you stand out there for five days. But cricket has changed. There's a new form of the sport. It's bringing in more money, fans, and a different style of play. One thing hasn't changed. It's complicated. It is one of the most complicated sports on earth. It's totally wiggly, it doesn't even follow any apparent obvious reason. That didn't put off the one billion people that were estimated to have watched a single cricket match in 2015 between wow. India and Pakistan. One in seven humans. Wow. So how did this confusing British game become one of the most popular sports on earth? And here's the England side coming into the field. I think Explained has like one of the best intro songs. Yeah, it does. It's certainly not an English man's game anymore. Commonwealth, baby! Damn straight! Teams of 11 play each other on a field shaped like an oval. The batting team has two players on the field at a time. They're trying to score runs, while the fielding team is trying to get them out. On each side of the pitch is a wicket. The wicket is three stumps topped by two bales. A batsman stands in front of a wicket, trying to hit the ball delivered by a bowler from the other end of the pitch. If the batsman hits the ball, they score runs. Each exchange equals one run. The fielders try to get the ball and hit one of the wickets before a batsman gets there. If they don't make it, they're out, and a new batsman comes in. If the batsman hits the ball hard enough, they won't have to run. If they hit it to the boundary, it's worth four runs. And all the way over the boundary, that's six. If a fielder catches the ball, the batsman is out. The bowler can also get a batsman out if their delivery hits the wicket. The bowler, however, can only bowl six deliveries at a time. An over. After each over, a teammate takes their place. When ten of the eleven batsmen are out, it's called a an inning and the other team bats. Traditional cricket, each team has two innings in a match and the team with the most runs at the end wins. If they haven't finished after five days, the umpire calls a draw. The British didn't just write the rules of cricket, they spread it around the world by taking it to their colonies in the 18th and 19th century. Even the United States played before baseball became the patriotic pastime. Americans are like, fuck the British. <laughs> <laughs> like, baseball's way Cricket easier. smacked of colonialism and therefore they were not going to play. Exactly. But in other colonies, playing cricket was an opportunity to beat the colonizers at their own game. And the English began inviting teams to come test their skills against them in England. Competitions were called test matches. Mm. Which is what the long form of the game continues to be called. The top countries that play the game has that little element of wanting to get back at the English. <laughs> and the colonies got a new opportunity to do that starting in 1975 when cricket got a World Cup. In order to play a tournament, matches needed to be shorter and end with a winner and a loser. So they played a one day form of the game that limited the number of overs faced by each team. The first two World Cups were both won by the West Indies. Wow. My cricket meant a lot to us as West Indians, and not just in the Caribbean. In the third World Cup, England didn't even make the finals. Wow. They had lost to India, 
A wow. team playing against the West Indies after having won a single game in the first two World Cups. Wow. In the final, nobody gave India a chance. They were like interlopers. On the day of the match, the feeling was, who are these people? Why are they at Lords? Why isn't England at Lords? But on the turf of their former colonizer, and with odds of 66 to 1, India won. Damn. God. For the first time, Indians at home watch their team win abroad. That marked the moment when India was confident. He played like a winner. This makes me so he happy, I don't know. I know. Everybody fight, fight for their lives, and they said, we will do it. India, for the first time, began to show that a country of that size, if it has prosperity, if it has television reach, it can play an enormous part in reshaping cricket, which it has done. India hosted the first World Cup outside of England. Wow. Nice. There's an Indian word called tamasha, which means fun, excitement, glamour, uh, uncertainty, all rolled into one. And one day cricket so became I'm gonna read up myself tamasha. tamasha Kauai. <laughs> You just are, are amazed at something that was started on green turf for the site of an English church and, and you know, light applause. Well played! <laughs> totally uh, good. This screaming religious ceremony. Take us down, win the World Cup, and a magnificent performance in front of 87,000 people. Wow. The, short, the short of it is, we don't celebrate like you Brits. No. We celebrate and our way. There's Sachin. Could be caught. It's caught. Sachin Tendulkar celebrates. The World Cup was worth so much money and that India and Pakistan were bringing so much of that money. It went from being England and Australia running the game to a more global thing. In England, domestic cricket was losing fans. In the early 2000s, a British TV network paid for Stuart Robertson and his marketing team to research what the problem was. The key word that came out of that was cricket was inaccessible. It was a sport for the posh. Yeah. Robertson had an idea. An even shorter form of cricket limited to just 20 overs for each team that would last three hours. All of those people who were indexed as never having come to a cricket match before, they massively over-indexed in saying, yes, we would come to that. They called the new format 2020, T20 for short and pitched it to the heads of English cricket at Lord's. Then the vote went up and it was 11-7 in favour. The next summer, T20 made its debut in England. The guy on the PA system, start of the game, he said, welcome to the future of cricket. Not everyone agreed. I don't like the razzmatazz that's going to go with it. The rest of the world got their opportunity to judge the new format in 2005. We welcome the world into Eden Park, Auckland, New Zealand. It felt a little bit like they weren't taking it very seriously. And here they come. Cairns, look at Amos Marshall in the background. Goodness Why? What is he on? Oh my heavens. <laughs> <laughs> when the format got its own World Cup, the advertising made it clear that T20 cricket was for. Party people! <laughs> you see World T20 from 11 to 24 September. India were like, this is stupid. We've already got one day cricket. We're more than happy. We don't need this other stupid thing. T20 cricket was an English invention. India was had almost dragged into the uh, World Cup. And they sent over a young team. That happened to be the best thing they could have done. Because wow. A lot of the old players didn't really understand T20 cricket, whereas the young players kind of understood that you had to go as hard. We need a movie good. about that. Of all the teams that India were playing, it was Pakistan. They were going to lose to Pakistan in the final. And then Mr. Al Haq, just as he's about to hit the winning runs, hits the ball straight up in the air. Oh, wow. It was a miracle. As a result of that, India said, oh, this is T20. If, if one day cricket was Tamasha, this was super Tamasha. <laughs> India launched a new T20 tournament called the Indian Premier League. In the first two years, the IPL doubled in value. And wow. in the decades since, it has developed a unique brand of cricket that combines entertainment with fast-paced action. Team owners include Bollywood stars like Preeti Zinta and Shah Rukh Khan, who take an active role in promoting the league. With IPL, the Indians finally discovered a three-hour Bollywood movie, which is actually live cricket. Teams also create their own anthems, like this one, promoting the Kolkata Knight Riders and featuring Bollywood star and team owner Shah Rukh Khan. Too cool. Too cool. Wow. It's extraordinary. 
extraordinary made-for-television excitements and these wonderful sort of uh, routines and dances. And NFL. It's like the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. There's no turning back. If the sponsors are telling you this is where they want to put their funds and the spectators are coming through the gates and the TV rights are huge in T20 compared to other things, then you got to run with it. The number of international matches of one-day cricket has declined over the last decade, while the number of international T20s has increased. This new form of the game has spread outwards from India. When the IPL was successful, all these other places went, oh, we'll set up our own leagues and we'll try and be successful. The difference is that the money and the TV is just not as strong in some of those other places. Now, it is IPL is where they earn the money. All the cricketers from this country want to go and play in IPL. People will develop an opinion that some players don't like playing for their country. They're just running the money down. Sport is about money, you know, you, you yeah. have to make a living. You're a sports person. This is entertainment. You can watch it every night and there'll be an unfolding narrative and that's what sport is at its best is. I've got no problem with that. The game has evolved. And again, entertainment is key. And wherever the game goes, it won't be decided by British gentlemen sitting in a boardroom. Oh, the power of cricket has shifted from England to India. There's no question about it. While Lords is still seen as a home of cricket, that's a symbolic home of cricket. That was a long time ago. Uh, you know, that is in history. Oh, cool. I really liked that because I feel like, I mean, I kind of had a vague idea of what cricket was about mm -hmm. because I, I played it once in PE when I was in primary school and obviously being exposed to it in England, but it's so complicated. A lot of English people don't understand cricket. Yeah, it's so complicated and I think that they really broke it down in a way that made it easy to understand. Now I'm sure like we've only scratched the surface when we had, when we had, what it is. When we had Chloe and her sister on, yeah. I wanted them to like help me understand cricket better. They're like, oh, we don't understand yeah. it either. I'm like, oh, that's just great. You all are from the mother country. How come you don't understand? But it's not the most popular sport in the UK. In the UK, we're much more into football. That's just because you guys aren't good at it anymore. That's the only reason. Because you all can't yeah, showboat. Because we get our asses kicked by everyone else. Like We get our asses kicked by India, Pakistan, West Indies, Australia. Like, boom. You know what makes me sad is there's no American Premier League. There's no American cricket team. I'm like, oh God, what will go it's into it? It's too complicated for you guys, okay? We only just Have you seen an NFL game? You. NFL games are so complicated also. I don't see any reason why we couldn't have a sport just like it. You have baseball, that's what you have. Uh, but anyway, what made me smile so much is just the uh, the notion of sticking it to the Brits. I feel like there's some sort of like residual blood from my ancestors regarding this. I was reading up on history because I was I was most curious about Canada because I'm like here we have this neighbor just above us for centuries, mm. and I'm like what what is the history there? How did we even have that divide? when the British basically took over this entire area. I was just basically watching a video that sort of summarized how all that worked out and why Canada retained some like British rule, so to speak. Not mm -hmm. really, like Canada was independent, but had, had, but like still acknowledged the queen or something uh, like they're, that. They're part of yeah. the Commonwealth. That's, they were, yeah, yeah, but Canada's its own thing. Anyway, I was just reading up on history about that and learning some things I didn't know before, like the fact that we had actually attacked Canada at one point. Like, America tried to take over certain areas of Canada for some stupid reason, and yet somehow we're palsies now. And Canadians were like, uh, yeah. no, eh? I suppose looking at that gives hope to the, uh, resolve between, the, you know, the feud of India and Pakistan. Like, maybe in another 150 years, they'll be chill, like the way America and Canada are. Who knows, that's a whole other topic. But bringing that up really illustrates why there was a billion views on the game between India and Pakistan. It's drama. Right. It's like being able to take out whatever aggression. history of aggression or, yeah. or whatever feelings you have in a match, in like a safe way. I mean, it shows you that Lagan is true to the, the feeling of why cricket even exists. Yeah. Or why it has become so popular because like the whole thing in Lagan was being able to stick it to the Brits, the yeah. colonizers, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing in real life too, is like being able to stick it to the colonizers. And that makes me happy for some reason. I don't know why. No, but I, I love it too, this notion of like this sport that was created by the Brits to be a very gentlemanly sport, you know? Oh, jolly good, uh, well done, well yeah. played, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then having a freaking tea break in the middle because, you know, you gotta have your tea and some sandwiches and, and then carry on playing and you wear white because it's like so clean and nice and whatever. Ever. And then evolving into this thing that the colonies took over mm -hmm. and then now it's countries like India that were once colonized 
who are like, no, we make the rules. We're the future of cricket. And yeah. I think that's just amazing. That's wonderful. Well, Canada obviously doesn't have a cricket team, even though they were part of the Commonwealth because it's too cold. Well, they just didn't take to it. Yeah. They, they're not. They're Canada not is kind of its it. own thing, anyhow. Canada, yeah. Canada's so, sort of this weird cousin that everybody has. Yeah. <laughs> we all share. Like, oh, yeah, you know, so that's, that's yeah. kind of. No, we, we like them. They're nice. They're yeah. a little bit weird. They're just that like sort of weird cousin that you have yeah. that you bring to the family bring dinner. To the family you're like, dinner. Oh, no, they're harmless. No, don't worry about them. <laughs> they're mostly they're cool. just playing with their own toys. No, we love Canadians. Um, <laughs> I wish America had some kind of things to sort of play in that as well. I mean, it only makes sense because we were part of, I suppose it evolved into baseball and it was yeah. our way of sticking it to the Brits saying, oh, we don't play your game, yeah. we play our own American game, which no one else cares about except for Japan. I don't know if baseball's fa you know, popular anywhere else in the world. That's very myopic on my part to say such a thing or, or uh, ignorant. So they had the, the T20, right? They were like, oh, here's the thing to get Brits excited again. And then what happened? is India's like, ah, oh, we don't care about that. We're gonna send our reject league. And then the reject league <laughs> kicks so much ass. And it, it's almost like, um, what's that Ben Stiller movie? Or, uh, Dodgeball? No, I was thinking of a superhero film. It was like the reject superhero. Oh, Mystery Men. Mystery Men. I never even saw the film, so that's not a really good reference. But the point is that these were supposed to be the throwaway team and they ended up becoming um, like the most famous thing in the world yeah. because they completely killed it at those games. I mean, it's the most unlikely thing. And I think that's awesome. And I, I'm wondering if there's a movie about that because I'd love to see like the movie version I'm, of that story. I'm sure, I'm sure that's gonna be made because I think right now Ranveer Singh is doing the movie about the World Cup mm -hmm. that India won, right? Okay. I think, was that 1983 World Cup? I'm sure that at some point there is gonna be the one about the 2020, but like, Watching that when they were when they were talking about how it just exploded, my <clears throat> mind immediately went, "Oh wow, that would be a really great investment." And then of course, all of the movie stars like jumping on board and seeing yeah. the investment opportunity in that because it's huge. People love sports, and India loves cricket. It just makes sense, and it's like um, what some of the guys were saying in there: sports is drama, sports is theater, but sport is a form of storytelling. And when when you're watching it like that you know it's kind of almost like watching your favorite tv serial mm. where you're like oh like last last time these guys were against each other like they've got beef and there's so much drama and it's really fun and like watching the clips of the crowd i'm looking at that and i'm going wow i would really love to be there like yeah. I'm not a sports lover really by any means, but it's so much fun to be at a live event and just kind of suck in that energy and that excitement. I feel like I have to watch that first segment about the rules a, 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 a few, few times, times just yeah. to like fully like absorb it. Because I was watching that, I'm like, oh, this is making so much and more sense. And then it sense. just <laughs> but Yeah, well, some of the things went over my head, but I'm understanding some of the basic ideas. Yeah. like what a, a test match is, which is five days long, and then yeah. you have your one day match, and you get your T20 or 2020. The one day match is 50 overs, right? Or 50 pitches or something like that. Uh, yeah. 50 outs, and then uh, T20 is 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 overs. overs. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm getting, getting a sense it. of it. But the test match is like unlimited over the course of five days. And yeah, whoever you're, has just more trying to, you're just trying to bowl the other team out, I gotcha. think. Gotcha, yeah. okay, cool. Well, yeah, you have 11 people on both sides, yeah. and you're trying to just get them all out. Yeah. I, yeah, see? Yes. Starting to click a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool.